The other day I was discussing what struck me as an interesting application, and I thought it would be something good to make a video slash do a little bit of an investigation on. The application was using a 67 material core as a power inductor. That in of itself is not really an interesting or unusual application. But what made this one kind of interesting was the fact that the operating frequency was only intended to be a couple hundred kilohertz. This is well below the operating frequencies where you generally want to use 67 material. Generally, it's a material targeted more towards the low megahertz to tens of megahertz range. Um, a couple hundred kilohertz is, is, there's better materials for it. The logic behind using 67 material was basically a uh, certain target inductance was needed and in order, using a 67 material core, being a low permeability material, the thought was to be able to not have an air gap to hit that target inductance. So we're going to look at EQ cores today. Um, that's this little guy here. And we're going to be looking at this in a range of materials and see if this uh, this thought process of not having to gap the core and maybe using a suboptimal material to do that is a good idea. So our constraints, so we're going to be doing testing on three different material cores out of the, in the same geometry. So we're going to be looking at a 79 core, 80 material core, and a 67 material core set, well core set, two, two cores. Um, our main constraint is that we're going to have a AL or an inductance factor of 165 nanohenries per turn squared. So the 67 material core set already meets that AL value with no gap added. But the 80 material and 79 material core sets are going to require gaps to achieve that inductance factor. Uh, the so 67 material. Seventy-nine material set and eighty set. So we're going to gap all the core sets to that same one sixty-five nanohenry per turn, and then we'll do some characterization. But the first step is going to be to go over to our machine shop and gap the cores. Okay, so we're back from the machine shop with our gapped cores. Um, in order to gap these, we basically ground out some of the center post here. So we're calling this distance here our gap length along the magnetic path. And here's our set of 79 material cores. You can see the gap cut out of the center post. So in order to achieve 165 nanohenries per turn, we wound up with, on our 79 set, gap length of 0.833 millimeters. Our 80 set, we wound up with a gap length of 0.747 millimeters. So 79 material of these three is the highest permeability material, so it's going to require the largest gap in order to get to that AL value. 80 material is between 67 and 79 material in terms of initial permeability, so the gap it requires is smaller. 
Um, so we're going to do a, a, a test a range of frequencies and well first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at inductance and quality factor over frequency and then we're going to be doing some power loss measurements and we're going to do those at 100, 250, 500, 750, and uh, 1000 kilohertz. So we're going to run each of the core sets with the same winding up to different overall um, power loss wattages and observe what types of flux densities we're able to achieve with each of the three different core sets at these different test frequencies. Uh, what we would expect to see in this low hundreds of kilohertz range, we would expect to see 79 material be the less, least lossy of these three materials. And at the higher end of that range, we would expect that to kind of shift to 80 material being the more optimal material. But that is also on solid cores that we would expect that and not gapped cores. So let's take a look and see how they perform with the gaps cut in them at the same AL value. Alright, we're back from the lab and we've completed our testing on our three different sets of cores. Um, we're not going to go too much into, just for the sake of not making this video four hours long, we're not going to go too much into all the different mechanics of what is driving the performance of the cores, gapped versus ungapped and different gap sizes. But let's just simply take a look at the couple charts and see how the cores performed. Alright, so the first chart we're going to look at here is our series inductance and quality factor over frequency that we measured on our impedance analyzer. So we can see here, this is plotted on two different scales. Um, this one line, which is actually all three of our, our plots of our 80 material, 79 and 67 material EQ25 cores. This is a plot of the series inductance, so we can see that, that they all lay right on top of one another, so our gapping um, forced them to have all the same AL values for each set. And what we're looking at here is our, our quality factor. So this green line here is our 67 material core set uh, quality factor. And we would typically, not that there's a direct uh, correlation but there generally is some trend of having a higher quality factor at a given frequency and equating to lower power losses. So we see our 67 material set here has by far and away at our test frequencies the highest quality factor. And then our 80 material and 79 material sets are pretty similar to one another uh, with a slight edge given to the 80 material set. So let's take a look at what that translated to in terms of power loss. So if we look, this is for two watts, measured two watts power loss, the corresponding flux density that each core set was at when it was achieving that two watts power loss plotted over frequency. So at the low end here at 100 kilohertz, the best core set was our 80 material set, which again is a little bit strange. You would expect 79 material to be better down here. Um, and then at 100 kilohertz, our 79 and 67 material sets are, are about the same as one another. Um, as we start moving up in frequency, the... 67 material set kind of starts pulling away from the other sets and it's from 250 kilohertz on 
is in, in theory the lowest loss set, even though these are the same uh, same loss numbers as each other, but the flux density to achieve that loss number was higher on the 67 set. And it's followed by the 80 material set and the 79 material set. So now we've taken a look at the performance of our three different core sets and our three different materials. We found that as the frequency increases, the 67 material core set uh, not having a gap tends to work a little bit better than the other two materials uh, despite the material being what in theory should be a little bit worse of a performer. So let's play around a little bit now and see if we can do a little bit better than the 67 core set. So we still have our three different cores in our, our three, well, three same geometries in three different materials. And let's do a little bit of uh, mixing and matching and see if we can get a little bit better performance. So we have our ungapped 67 core set. So if we take one of those halves and mix it with a 79 or an 80 core, we'll wind up with a gap length somewhere between the two materials and a permeability material somewhere between the two materials. Um, so let's see if we take our 67 material and mix it with a 79 material core, we're going to need a gap length of 0.417 millimeters. If we take 67 and mix it with 80 material, we're just going to need a gap length of 0.374 millimeters. And then finally, let's mix 79 and 80 material together. And that's going to give us a gap length of 0.791 millimeters. So let's see. We'll, we'll do the same testing on these three combinations. And let's take a look at that and see what we wind up with. So we're looking at that same series inductance and quality factor versus frequency chart that we looked at for the uh, three different material sets, but now we have our combination sets listed as well. So again, the series inductance over our test frequency is the same for all now all six core sets, core combinations. And we start looking at the quality factor and our 67 and 80 material set has substantially higher quality factor than just the 80 set. And same story here with the 79 material and 67 material set. So we wind up with quality factors somewhere between the 67 material and the 79 and 80 material sets. And then our 79 and 80 material combo quality factor comes in as you would kind of expect looking at this right between our 80 set and our 79 set. So let's see how that translates over to power loss. And apologies for how busy this chart looks, but we can see our original materials, the uh, dark blue line here, orange line, and gray line. And as we start looking here, and this is kind of more what we'd expect performance-wise from the materials, 79 and 80 material give us best performance down at our 100 kilohertz test frequency. And as we start moving up in frequency, things get a little bit more interesting. Our second test point here at 250 kilohertz, we see the 67 and 79 material combo taking the lead. And then as we push frequencies up a little bit further, we'll see that the 67, 79 combo is more or less mirroring the 67 material set performance. But what's pulling out ahead is our 67 and 80 material combination 
and out to a megahertz, that's actually giving us the highest flux density for a given power loss level. So interestingly enough, it, it seems like having a you know, combination of cores together is beneficial, at least from this one metric. So we've taken a look at our six different core sets and wound up with some pretty interesting results. Now obviously this is a very simplistic test and little experiment that we're running here. We want more sets for drawing better conclusions off of this and additionally when talking about gapping a core usually you have more constraints or more to factor in than just the AL value. So this isn't a de facto at this frequency you should be using a 67 and 80 material combination set or 79 or, or whatever the core set. But this was kind of a, you know, I thought something of an interesting topic to do a video on and hopefully it was helpful or at the very least interesting to some of you out there and Again, this is Mike Harrison from Ferrite Products. Thank you for watching.